Welcome to our review on competition for resources. So first thing we need to understand then is what we actually mean when we're talking about competition. And quite simply, whenever we see the word competition, we're talking about the struggle between organisms for the resources that they need to survive. Now, depending on which organism we're talking about, we're going to be talking about different resources that they require. If we think about plants, first of all, then in order to survive, our plant needs light, it needs space to grow, it's going to need water and minerals and carbon dioxide. If we compare that with the animals, then generally speaking, animals will be competing for food, for their space or their territory, for a mate, for water and for shelter. Another term we need to understand here is the phrase population. So whenever we're talking about the population, we're referring to the number of organisms of a particular species in a named area. And what we find is that the population will be affected by competition. So if we look at competition between plants, first of all, we've said that they need a variety of different things in order to actually survive and therefore they will compete for those things. So if we start off with light, first of all, the reason our plants need light is because of photosynthesis. So what we find is that if it's too shady, then the plant won't get enough light, therefore it can't carry out enough photosynthesis, which is why you don't tend to find many plants growing underneath a thick canopy of trees. We obviously need space to allow the tree roots to actually be able to grow in the ground, which means there may not be much space for the ground plants. In terms of the minerals, obviously the plants need a variety of minerals in order to maintain their good health, and these will be absorbed in water through their roots. So again, what we see is if we're comparing a tree with small plants, the tree will always have that advantage because it's going to absorb far more minerals than the little plants will. In terms of water, we use that in photosynthesis and to also keep our plant cool. So our large tree is again going to be absorbing lots of water and the small ground plants won't be able to access as much. And finally, carbon dioxide then again required for photosynthesis. And what we find is that if we've got a big canopy of trees covering the entire area, they're going to be absorbing carbon dioxide, meaning that there's less available under the tree for those ground plants to grow. If we now consider competition between animals, then what we'll find is that in some areas, you've got different species of animals that are competing for the same food supply. So in order to actually be able to survive in that same area together, they need to find some kind of a solution to this problem. And what we can see in the diagram is how they actually come about this. So in order to solve that problem, what we've got on our diagram is a puffin and a herring gull. So what we find is they both live in the same sort of area on the cliff and they're both going to be feeding on the shellfish and the small fish in the sea. However, they're going to go to different areas in order to actually feed. So you can see our puffin goes much further out to sea and our gull tends to stay much closer to the cliffs. So that means even though they're feeding on the same food, because they're feeding in different areas, then they can actually survive in the same environment together. So basically what we've seen is that these birds have developed different lifestyles in order to survive. And what we have there is something called a niche. So whenever referring to the niche, what we're referring to is the unique way an organism has of surviving in its environment. So in this case, what we've got are different feeding niches because our herring gull is going to then stay closer to the cliff and feed in those areas, whereas our puffin is going to be feeding further out at sea. So we've got two different niches for its feeding, even though they live in exactly the same area on the cliff. When we're talking about competition, we need to understand that there are two different types. The first one is interspecific competition, and this is between organisms of different species. So what we'd find here is that we've got two different species that are both competing for the same food supply, for example. So in that case, it's interspecific. The other type of competition is intraspecific, and that is between organisms of the same species. So you may have an area where you have two family groups of monkeys. They would then be of the same species, but they'd be competing for the same food supply. So that would be intraspecific.